decades. Hello, hello everybody. Happy Thursday, here we are again. We are here live with Gabriela Hernandez. Hooray. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello. Hey. So today Gabriela brought some more uh, wonderful vintage finds and we've got a real mix. So that's pretty exciting. And um, as we go through those, if you have questions at any point, just let me know. My name is Amber, I'll be going through the questions and giving them to Gabriella. Also, if you do have any questions about business things as well, we've done that in a couple previous uh, videos. So since Gabriella is, you know, a wonderful acclaimed entrepreneur, if you do have any questions along those lines, feel free to ask those too, because they're really fun. Um, people, we had some great questions in the past. So if you have anything like that, please let us know and we'll put that in the chat and get through it. If we don't get to your question immediately, uh, no big deal. I promise I will get to it uh, as we go through things. And then lastly, before we get started, as you can see, we are not in the same place, Gabriella and I. <laughs> we okay. are still distanced. So if there are any little technical things, please uh, put it in the comments and we just thank you in advance for your patience. Shouldn't be a problem though. And Gabriella, let's get to the fun stuff. Yay. Yay. So what do you have? Uh, what's our first vintage piece from your collection today? Well, uh, today I have uh, uh, a trio of different compacts from around the 50s, uh, 50s, 60s, and they're all different types of plastics. Uh, during this time, uh, compacts kind of changed a bit from like the really nice metal ones that you saw in the 40s and in the 30s and we started to use more plastics and uh, plastics that were kind of swirled so the kind of the swirl type of color plastics were popular so a lot of compacts uh, were made from these materials so I have a few that I can show you uh, also the compacts got larger too in in this period so you had instead of the very tiny you know little compacts that would go in small purses uh in the you know 30s and 40s you had compacts that were kind of oversized uh during this period so larger larger compacts you know they like oh. super sized compacts so uh so i have some to show you today um this one here is the first one that i have to show you it's kind of like uh utilitarian kind of saucer looking oh. compact uh, <laughs> Uh, and it's got ridges on both sides, but if you can see the texture, it's kind of has a, a marbling effect. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's entirely made out of this plastic material. And this is a refillable compact. So they still have oh. the, the, you know, the, the, um, the practice of refilling compacts, but now they weren't necessarily made out of metals. They were made out of plastic. So this is a plastic compact. You can see the interior. Um, has a puff uh, inside, uh, and this is the puff here. So a puff with a ribbon kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, and, and the netting, because this was for, uh, you can oh. put loose powder in there. So when you see these nets in compacts, it means that you were supposed to put your loose powder in here, and then this net would go on top of it, so it would keep it from kind of spilling all over, and then mm -hmm. your puff would go on top of that and be able to pick up the powder. Um, oh, that's cool. So that's what these nets are for. So when you see these, it means that it's a refillable uh, compact for loose powder. Um, and then uh, I guess you could put a pan if there was a pan large enough for this, but this, mm -hmm. this is just a well, as you can see in the inside. And so you put your loose powder, you put that in there. And um, so this was sold as a refillable type compact. So uh, kind of that, that type of plastic, really interesting. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, di different texture on this compact. So it's not like a really hard, it kind of has a bit of a different feel to oh. the plastic. So it's not as brittle as other plastics. Um, and do you so know what brand not... that was from? No, it has no brand. 
Uh, it has no, no brand at all. So I have no idea actually who manufactured this, uh, but there were a lot of them uh, in that period. So yeah. uh, maybe with the packaging, the, unfortunately I don't have the packaging for this, so I'm not quite sure who manufactured it, but, uh, but there's quite a few of this type of compacts around. Um, the next one here is a really large. <laughs> so big. <laughs> when you hold it up, that really, like covers really your whole face. <laughs> really, really large, compact. <laughs> wow, that is a big As one. You wow. can see, it's also got kind of a pattern of like, you know, kind of swirly plastic kind yeah. of uh, stuff. As you can see here, uh, it's kind of like, kind of trying to be a tortoise shell, but it's yeah, not exactly. really. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's actually a, a double mirror compact, so it's not really oh, compact, okay. compact, but more of a like dual mirror type of thing. Uh, wow. So there's two mirrors in here uh, and uh, and big hinge on there. But uh, but there were Ooh. even compacts this size that also held powder. So, so this is kind of like an example of the size that they could come in at that time. So there were some that were quite hefty, actually. And that was in the 50s also? Yes. Yes, yeah. So this is uh, 50s, and then in the 60s, there were also compacts made out of these materials still. Um, so, so does it kind of... say anything on the top, or is that just a design? You could kind no, of see it, like a... it, it's just like a design. It kind of okay. looks like, like three things that like up, down, up, like, like, like almost mm -hmm. like opening and, 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 uh, and yeah. putting on and off switches or something. Uh -huh. So it's a very interesting design, but again, I have. I don't know exactly who manufactured it. There's not any markings on these as far as like who made them necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but kind of an interesting uh, kind of uh, shape yeah. and uh, even the shape of this, of this part of it is kind of interesting because it's completely square. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a square. <laughs> It's kind yeah, of it's not rounded fun, off at all. Yeah, it's not rounded totally at all. It's a totally wow. Flat. Yeah, <laughs> so it's very, very hefty kind of uh, things like this. Uh, and the we army actually made yeah. one like this too. Oh. Actually, just yeah, they they did. They made a refillable one. It was red. Um, it wasn't uh, this this shape. It was a round shape, uh, but uh, but it was about this size, and it was similar to this compact where it had a puff and you refilled it with the, with the screen in, inside, but, uh -huh. um, but it was an army issued type compact uh, and it was just red plastic, basically about this size. Uh, and wow. uh, yeah, that one's very interesting too. Uh, kind of hefty size compact. I, well. I could imagine that would be pretty, <laughs> have to be a pretty heavy duty one. We yes. had a couple quick questions. Yes. Uh, a couple of people asked if you'd be interested in making a larger oversized compact like that at Bessemer at any point? Uh, I don't know uh, because um, we're trying to go back into making, you know, refillable compacts. And so when we do that, we have to kind of commit to a size that we can make refills for so that we can continue to offer you a wide variety of refills. So if we made a compact that was that large, it would be hard to have refills for something that big, you know, mm -hmm. um, usually, uh, those are made, um, currently the people who manufacture compacts that size, they usually do it for like products that you put all over your body, like a bronzer. I've seen oh. them for bronzers or for all, all around body powders. Um, uh, uh, but not necessarily for makeup because they're so large that they're kind of meant to be used on something that you would put liberally over a larger area of yeah. your body so they usually saw I've, I've seen them for like kind of shimmer or bronzing powders that come in very okay. large compacts like that yes oh interesting and then someone asked where do you locate your your antique pieces where do you like to find them well um all over really i mean mm -hmm. sometimes i go to uh, antique shops and uh and look around and i get lucky sometimes that they have something that i can use um other times i look online so I look on all the different uh, uh, auction web websites like mm -hmm. eBay's and um, uh, Etsy or any of these other websites where people uh, sell antique things. Um, there are a few auction houses if you're looking for something, you know, more 
um, unique uh, and uh, a little bit uh, higher price points. Uh, there are mm. auction houses that auction like really uh, interesting, like 1930s um, perfume containers or something mm. that's uh, more uh, precious metals or stones and things like that. So there are uh, websites that uh, that deal in antiques that would also have those types of items as well. But eBay is a pretty good place to start, right? They have a surprising yeah. amount of amount yeah. of options on there. Yeah, no, eBay is very good. Um, it, it it's just kind of the luck of the draw on there. Yeah. Sometimes I go in there and I look and there's really nothing. Um, but then sometimes somebody has something and they and they post it. So. Um, it's really depending on, you know, what's available and what somebody posted there. So um, I check all the time if I'm looking for something in particular. Um, and not only the ones here, but also the, the version of the, in the UK and the other uh, uh, selling sites in other countries, because they might have something that we don't have here. So you might be able to yeah. get it from the UK version uh, of eBay instead. That's cool. Um, oh, we had a question from the makeup or breakup blog. Uh, can you tell authentic versus fake um, for vintage pieces when you look at them online? Or how can you tell vintage versus fake? Well, um, I guess it depends on what they're trying to sell you. I wouldn't, uh -huh. take, uh, I wouldn't take any of the descriptions that you read at face value uh, because a lot of the times people put descriptions on items but they don't really know. Uh, for sure that what they're saying is actually true. I've seen a lot of things advertised as like, oh, 1920 is compact, and that compact was not made in 1920. Uh, but the person who posted it either um, is misleading you or they don't know and they're just guessing uh, and they're mm -hmm. putting something down. Uh, so don't go necessarily by, the, um, by what the description says uh, on it. Uh, whenever people are selling something like Bakelite, for example, that is more expensive if it's actually real Bakelite. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily buy that on eBay uh, if, if you don't know the seller uh, very well because uh, it's very easy to kind of uh, make fake Bakelite products that look like it, but they're not actually. And unless you test it with some um, acid at home, when you get home, you can test it and see if it's actually Bakelite uh, because it still contains the formaldehyde. So there's ways you can test that. Uh, if you don't test it, actually, you don't know for sure that it's actually Bakelite. Um, so I wouldn't chance it to pay a lot of money for something that is said to be that uh, online without you being able to check uh, that for a fact that that's what it is. Um, uh, other products, I mean, you can, uh, you can ask for more detailed photos if you're not sure of something. Uh, usually, if you're talking about like silver or things like that, there's a stamp that tells you what kind of silver it is. So uh, make sure that there's a photo of the stamp and you can see it clearly. Um, also, you know, uh, the brand, whatever brand that's supposed to be, look up the brand and make sure that what that it looks like is what was produced by that brand. So if you do kind of your research on your own to figure out what this actually looked like, you can kind of see if there's discrepancies on what this other piece is looking like. Um, so I, I would do a, a little bit more digging before uh, you, uh, you commit to it. Um, but I don't think you will find like counterfeit pieces unless they're really more expensive pieces because I don't think anybody's going to want to counterfeit you a, a lipstick because it's not something that's that costly. But, you know, if you're talking about a silver compact or a Bakelite uh, jewelry piece or something like that, then I would, I would be more careful with that. Oh. Just out of curiosity, what happens when you, when you test Bakelite with acid? How can you tell? Well, uh, it's supposed to have a different scent uh, that comes out of the product because of oh. the, um, uh, the way that it reacts to, to, to that. Uh, so because of the formaldehyde is still present in the plastic. So you can uh, do that very easily at home. If you have the, the piece, you can test it that way. And if you look at it online, it'll tell you exactly how to do it. And, okay. uh, and then you can, you can tell right away if it is real or if it's not real. 
because um, wow. the, the the normal ones are not are are basically acrylic uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. They're poured acrylics that kind of mimic the look of bakelite, but they're not actually the real bakelite, which is made with from other heights. So the real one still has traces of that. So you can test for that, and wow. and and then you can see if it's actually real. Um. Cool. Let's do our next compact and then we'll sure. get back to a couple sure. of questions. Um, this one is, I, again, a very interesting one. I like the color because it seems to be like Ooh. it's kind of in right now, this kind of like uh, pinky, you know, type of color. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's, it's kind of a cute compact. This, this company that, that made this is called the, um, it came in this box right here which is kind of neat looking too, I thought. Ooh. It's kind of a pretty box. And, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's made by the uh, uh, TW Ra Raleigh Company. Oh. And, uh, and it's a company that actually started in the 1800s and they made like medicines and things like this that you could drink and cough syrups and other stuff, you know, oh. like like patent medicine type things. And then they yeah. expanded into doing cosmetics after a while. And so, uh, so this was one of the products. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called a powder pack and it's a foundation and face powder blended with lanolin cream. Oh, so this is kind of how they did makeup on the late fifties and that they, they had, um, you know, cream makeups, but they also had uh, compact makeups and, what they did is they mixed creams with the powder to kind of make it more of a like makeup base. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, for this one, they use a uh, lanolin. Lanolin was very um, common uh, moisturizer in, in makeup uh, at that time. So uh, a lot of products use lanolin uh, to, uh, to, to add to powders and creams and other things. Um, so, uh, so it says it's a complete non-streak makeup that smooths on like face powder and clings for hours. So there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it was distributed also in Montreal and Winnipeg. So it, it, oh, well. it actually went to Canada as well. And uh, the color is called natural. So I show you, I'll show you. Uh, it has a mirror on the inside and a puff. Mm -hmm. uh, and the puff... Um, Kind of, it's kind of like a, it's like a little quilty kind of puff. Mm -hmm. um, and then it does still have a piece of, a uh, piece of uh, oh, paper, the, kind of like oh, wow. wax paper in between uh -huh. to guard the thing. And then this is uh, natural right there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it's a, pretty, it's uh, like almost yeah. Full? Do you think that it was used? Yeah, it's full. No, it was not. Wow. It, it was not. It, uh, there's a lot of powders that, and if you uh, look at the color, it does have some coverage and it's fairly soft. I mean, oh, wow. You can see. <laughs> That's a lot of coverage. I'm yeah, surprised. you can see it. You can wow. see how white, but look at how uh, white that is. <laughs> I know. That's natural. <laughs> That's a, this is natural. Yeah. Yeah. So if I put this on, it, 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 it would probably look really bad on it would not look natural I don't no think. it would not it look like na a natural ghost a natural ghost yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can kind of see it, it is uh, uh, it is kind of soft and it's got a nice uh, you know kind of like a, you know a normal kind of foundation powder you know yeah. uh, it has that same feel uh, so so it's not the formula is probably not not too different from things that we do now except we use other emollients instead of lanolin but uh but it's a, yeah. it's a similar feel uh to like you know the the complexion powders that are meant for foundation now yeah so very interesting though like you know the little compact with the thing and mm -hmm. it has a little thing in the back and it has ridges in the back kind of like a record oh yeah which is kind of interesting oh, oh that's cute and can you explain a little bit about why, what were they using lanolin for and why don't we use that uh, so much today in skincare? Uh, well, they, they used it for, um, for um, like as a moisturizer. It's a very good, uh -huh. um, um, very good moisturizer. It comes from the sheep. Uh, basically, when they shear the sheep, there's uh, on, the, on the base of where the hair is and mm -hmm. right on the skin of the sheep, there's this kind of like... Um, 
creamy substance uh -huh. that that uh, that the sheep produces there, and and that's called lanolin, basically. So they they take that uh, off and they process it and, and take off any impurities that would be on in the animal and and uh, and then that's used as a moisturizing agent uh, for a lot of things because the, the oil is very heavy and and thick and it uh, creates a barrier it's a very good uh -huh. um, a moisture a barrier for skin so it's been used for hand creams and all kinds of protective creams for a long time um, the reason we don't use it as much, I mean, people still use it, um, yeah. but uh, but you have to be very conscious of the source of the lanolin to make sure that there aren't any impurities in it, because if it's not processed correctly, it could have impurities left over from the animal and mm -hmm. the uh, the hair and and wow. all of that. So um, so so you have to make sure that it doesn't have any of these impurities. So you have to make sure your source is good for this and it's it's checked and it's, you know, double checked and triple checked so that they're, it, it, it's very, very much filtered. So um, all of these things are taken out and, and um, you know, so some people are afraid to use it because of that, because there's danger of contamination for mm -hmm. products that have lanolin, depending on the sourcing. Um, but if you know the company and you know that the product is uh, reputable, then it, it shouldn't have a problem. It's it's great for like uh, hand hand creams or any kind of barrier protectant, especially for the cold. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're going out in the cold and and that the it's it creates a very a very nice barrier so that moisture doesn't escape your skin. So so it yeah. keeps your skin from getting ultra dry in those situations. So it's very effective for that. It works on the sheep. So it works, yeah. you know, it works on <laughs> your skin as well. Um, you just have, <laughs> yeah, you know, you just have to make sure that it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good product. Uh, and the sourcing is, is good on it. Uh, but, uh, but it is very, very effective. And so they used to use it quite a bit on all types of not only, you know, makeup, but also creams, uh, at the time. So yeah. creams with lanolin were very, very common. Uh, face creams, hand creams, you know, all kinds of uh, creams that contain this because it was, you know, it was, a, it, it was sold as a skin protectant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see, we have, uh, yes, this question from Kiana, I believe Kiana Mullen. Um, mm -hmm. She's interested in how you duplicate your lipstick colors from vintage products. I think mean, we've talked okay. about this a little bit before, but I think it's always sure. fascinating. <laughs> And sure. I, think I always hear something a little new every time too. But yeah, if you can go into how you uh, find and replicate colors a little bit, that would be sure. awesome. Uh, well, I, I, I scour all over the place for these colors. So I'm looking for containers from different years, depending on the year that I'm looking for. So if I need something from 1960, for example, I'll start looking for um, companies that made product in 1960. So first I have to figure out what company it is that I'm looking for, what color it is that I'm looking for from that company. And then I start looking to see if I can find an original anywhere. So I start researching all over uh, auction sites, any, any other antique places. So anywhere that I can search for these things, um, because I'm not only looking for a container of the product, but a container that has the lipstick inside. Uh, and the lipstick in good enough condition that I can actually get the color reference from this. So, um, which, which a lot of times it takes a long time to do because uh, not all product uh, is kept the same way. So some products, um, like I uh, shared before, I bought a whole tray of uh, Coty lipsticks um, from the 50s and, uh, and I was very excited to get this and, because it had all this ranges of colors in there. And uh, I was so disappointed that most of these were not usable because when I opened them, they all had turned uh, basically almost white. So all the color had been bleached out of these, these lipsticks uh, because of how they were stored and the years that passed. So most of them were not usable. So I was so disappointed <laughs> uh, in this uh, because I did not know that when I, when I purchased it. Um, so, uh, so, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a hunt type of thing of finding the right ones. And then when I do locate them, I have to analyze the shade and figure out exactly how that was made and how we can actually duplicate it using um, 
uh, pigments that are produced today to get a similar effect as to this, what this lipstick did before. Great. We've got lots of questions today. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, Lana says you look gorgeous today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so one quick question. We might not be able to answer this one, Ashley. Uh, but is there any clue as to when the next Disney collab will come out? Is there any very blanket estimate you can give people? In the if fall. Not, in, in the, the fall. fall. Yeah, in the fall. There we go. Yeah, yeah in the, in the <laughs> fall. Yeah. So, all we so, can say. <laughs> well, it, it, it will be this year, in the fall. <laughs> yeah. So I can't there we say go. exactly, but, uh, but this year you'll have something else. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty, uh, yes. that narrows yeah. it down okay, I think. Yes, I can't um, say exactly, but in the fall. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yay, so that's good. That's exciting to look forward to. Yes, um, yes, we yes. had one. Um, we have two questions then about how did you get the replica of Maryland's 1959 color? So yeah, let's start with that. And I think we answered yes. this one also before, but again, these things all have different little shades to them and are fascinating. So yeah, what was the process you used to get the red hot red, which you're wearing right now, actually? Yeah, I'm wearing right now. Uh, well, on, on some of these products, I, I managed to find, uh, I mean, Marilyn's things, you know, have been sold at auction in the past, you know, so all her makeup, you know, has been... Uh, sold at au different auctions, you know, over the years. So I started kind of going through that and looking at all the auction pieces that were sold and then what colors were the auction pieces that were sold that she actually owned and, um, and then found those uh, colors, which, again, took me a while to do all of these things uh, because some of them were kind of obscure colors that weren't actually made uh, uh, for the general public but were made just for her. Uh, oh. So I was uh, looking for specific colors. Then, of course, references from the stills, the movie stills from that period. Uh, so production photos of, of the movie and the set. Um, mm -hmm. So between all of these sources together, that's kind of how I pieced together all this information uh, from uh, written accounts, um, uh, auctions, uh, antiques, um, and uh, information from the production set. Cool. It's all so detailed. It's just so nice to hear that, you know, <laughs> at, when you say something is based on a vintage piece or based on something, you have done your research, you know, above and beyond. I <laughs> try. Really mean it. I, I try. Cool. I, I, I really try really hard to give you things that are accurate. Um, sometimes it's very, very difficult because uh, after so many years, things get lost. Nobody knows anything. There's nobody left that knows anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very, very hard sometimes for me to track down certain things and, and to get anybody that knows anything about anything uh, or even cares about it at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm the only one that cares. A lot of people just don't, <laughs> don't, don't have any, any, you know, compunction to know these things, but I still do. So, um, so I just keep uh, going. I'm, uh, you know, you have to be, um, have that perseverance of just continuing to keep on and keep on uh, until you get what you're looking for. And I'm kind of that yeah. way. I just keep uh, pounding on it until I actually get where, where I'm trying to go. And some things are way more difficult than others. And Maryland is one of those things that's a very, very difficult thing uh, to track down because there's... Uh, Again, against uh, people that are very iconic, uh, there's so much hearsay around what, uh, mm. what they did or didn't do. So there's a lot of people saying things, but nobody really knows what they're saying is actually true. So there's just a lot yeah. of misinformation. So, so it gets very confusing to try to research when there's so much noise, you know. So, uh, so that gets more challenging depending on who I'm researching. Um, mm -hmm. But I love to do it, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's just very time-consuming, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, we had a question about lipstick. Yeah, Gabrielle's wearing Red Hot Red, and I'm wearing yes. the Mickey Mouse Red, which is based on Mickey Mouse's yeah. first color. Uh, when he was first in color, the color of his shoes and shorts were exactly this red color here. And uh, if you like the Mickey Mouse Red, I mean, if you like both, feel free to get them, please. But Mickey Mouse yeah. Red will not be around for much longer. So if you yes. like this one, I would definitely get it sooner than later. Um, and we had, let's see. Oh, my gosh, all the questions. I'm very Oh, very yeah, excited. that's great. Uh, we have um, 
do you have relationships with older brands like Maybelline or Revlon to gain access to their libraries of makeup from the 30s, 40s, 50s? Uh, I wish I did, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they like uh, that too much actually. sharing uh, yeah they don't they're not into sharing that kind of information if anything actually some of these brands have approached me to do research for them um, and uh, and of course I'm, I'm too busy with my own research to to do their research but I have been approached to do <laughs> research work for them which is kind of funny wow. uh, <laughs> uh, but but no I, I don't really have any relationship uh, with them uh, to get the things because I don't think they, they necessarily would want to share that with me because uh, obviously they, they'd rather keep that to themselves. Yeah. And then we have a couple of questions about future iconic women. Uh, you yeah. know, if you'd consider Audrey Hepburn or women of color like Lena Horne. And they're definitely, I mean, there's so many women. Oh, yes. There's so many On women. the table for this. Oh, yes. There's a lot. And I, I think the next uh, two women that we have coming up, you will not be disappointed on. I think uh, I think they're they're awesome women, uh, so accomplished, so iconic. I, I, I can't wait to to share them with you. Uh, but uh, yeah, next year we have some really great great women. Yay! Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, let's go to the last item you have, and then we'll get yes. through any other questions. Uh, you guys have feel free to put them down. And then when it comes to yeah. iconic women, we again can't give away too much. So if you're asking like, oh, yes. we do uh, Grace Kelly or Audrey Hepburn, unfortunately we just can't say any specifics, but we do right. love hearing your feedback of who you're interested in and yes. um, know that all this kind of like heart and research and care will be going into all the women that come out in the future. Definitely, definitely. And, and remember, these, these take a, a little bit of time because yeah. of all the research. And whenever I do an iconic woman, I have to work with the family and the foundation that, that uh, owns her, her likeness, but also the family, if there's family left behind uh, of this person that knows a lot about them. So, um, so it takes a bit of time to get all that research done, to talk to people, talk to people that knew them, if that's the case, or, or their family members. And, and put together something that makes sense, that was accurate to what that person actually liked and, and wore. Um, so, so the collections take a bit of, of production and, and time and research to do. So we're working on them. We're working on them for you know, the, the next ones coming up for next year already. Uh, so, uh, so yes, please send us your suggestions and we'll be uh, happy to uh, consider all, all of them. Uh, but just keep in mind that uh, the ones we pick are the ones that really we can get the most information from and we can actually work with people that actually knew the, these people so that we can make really something accurate and, and exciting for you. Yeah. Great. So what's our last uh, vintage piece um, we have today? Well, the last piece I have is just a, a column that I found that was so interesting I wanted to share with you. Uh, it's from this uh, it's, it's magazine. It's called Women's Home Companion. Uh, and it's this magazine here. You can see it. Um, and this mm -hmm. one is from January of 1956, this magazine. And, uh, and it's just, uh, it, it was an interesting thing to look at because, you know, people think that, you know, obviously we've, we've moved so, so many years ahead and, and things changed and all that. So it, it's funny to read things like this because, uh, it just tells you that, um, that uh, you know, teenagers and people have the same questions and the same kind of concerns as they did in the past. Because yeah. uh, this column here is called uh, Talk of the Teens. Uh, and it says, teenagers' biggest problems in 1956. So this is, this is the <laughs> name of the column here, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which is very, very funny. And, uh, and then when you read all these teenagers and their questions on the side here, um, it's, uh, it's very funny to see, um, you know, what is uh, it's, uh, popularity? Just how important is it? You know, is the oh. popular teenager automatically a happy, well-adjusted teenager? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> I love that it has yes. their pictures next to it. Yeah, too. it has their pictures in their, in their age. Most of them are 17. Mm -hmm. um, this one says, uh, 
All teenagers are confronted with serious problems. How can they gain self-confidence? You know, or, a- you know, that's, that's another thing. Um, you know, let, let's discuss the art of getting along well with other people and meeting <laughs> and new friends. <laughs> so, Literally, yeah. I'm curious, fun. what does it say for the popularity question? You don't have to read the whole thing or anything. But. That, that's all it says. These are the questions. They, oh, these are just the questions. Yeah, they oh, okay. questions that, that teens have, not the answers. Okay. But the, what, what they're thinking, basically, and what, uh-huh. they, what kind of is on their mind. Oh, so we just get yeah. a glimpse of you yeah, just get a glimpse, what they're going like, through. Exactly. So another one was like jobs are on many teenagers' minds. A breakdown of the main kinds of jobs would be helpful. That's yeah, that you know? goes through today. Yeah. That would, yeah. That'd be helpful to yeah, know. I know. You know, what is getting a job after high school really like? You know? How can teenagers and their parents become better friends? Oh. <laughs> Let's have a column to discuss the wallflower. One of the most painful experiences for a boy or a girl. <laughs> oh, I wish we could compare these to your 18-year-old daughter. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, yes, yes. Well, I'm yes. probably similar. Yes, yes. It's so funny, though, that, uh, you know, uh, future careers, you know, work, you know, uh, so they don't know what to do, uh, how to choose, yeah. you know, careers, um, how can they tell if somebody's interested in them? You know, so dating, oh, sure. dating problems. You know, uh, you know, how how do you date and what do you do? Uh, you know, uh, how do you go steady with somebody? You know, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So very interesting. One uh, one one girl wants to know what are the advantages and disadvantages of of having a boyfriend. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> you know, she's like just the, like weighing out, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's Which, not really for me. I'm like, you know, you know, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you know. Another one wants to know about manners. Do the teenagers okay. know which fork to pick up, and and how to make a proper introduction? Probably not. I I, I, think, I don't know my don't forks. So. I'll be honest. No, I don't, yeah, I really couldn't tell yeah. anybody about fork etiquette for sure. No, not at all. <laughs> Another one wants to know the problems with younger brothers and sisters. Again, you know, same. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that has changed anyone. You know, no. Uh, you know, and another one. You know, a career in college and and uh, getting married. Should a girl who plans on getting married and does not intend to pursue a career go to college? You know. Oh, is it worth paying for that? Huh, interesting. It's very interesting, you know. uh, It's another one that wants to know, most most teenagers take greater note of world events. Uh, You know, I'd like to hear opinions of teens throughout the nation about world events. So, very interesting, um, very, very interesting. uh, What was on their mind, you can kind of see, you know, that it was mainly you know, I guess dating or getting along yeah, with other things or job related things or career and that. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, I don't think it's necessarily that much different than, than what kids are actually thinking now. Uh, actually. So it's very interesting it's to really read not. this. It's really not. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny to read this from 1956 and to say, well, you know, I don't, I don't think that um, their concerns are that different from our concerns necessarily, you know, so. I know. And when the world yeah. looks so different, we just assume that things have just changed so drastically. Yeah. And last week you yeah. shared a, a McCall's magazine. And yeah. it was so surprising how many similarities there were. There, um, there, a couple there people are, are mentioning the new, the new one may, might have, how can I become famous on TikTok? Well, <laughs> Which yes. we wouldn't have had. <laughs> but other than that. Well, yes. It's a different uh, kind of popularity, uh, that's though. That's a different, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it goes back to popularity, you know. Do yeah. You, do, you know, do you have to be popular to, to actually be happy, you know? Yeah. That's Which is kind a of a main question, question, really. It's kind of a, uh, it is a deep question. It seems very uh, straightforward, but it is very deep, actually, you yeah. know. Uh, and how do you, another one wants to know, what is the ethical t- thing to do when you don't approve of behavior of the rest of the crowd? You know? That's an excellent question. That's an, again, <laughs> a very right timely now, question. It's a very timely question. You're like, if people aren't wearing masks, <laughs> you know, what do you do with that? Oh, what boy. is the ethical thing to do? 
in a group yeah. setting, you know. Uh, it, same question. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Different That's time. so fun. You know, it's, it is very interesting uh, how things apply to different yeah. situations and that. So it, it's kind of, uh, I always get a kick out of looking into these magazines because it does give you a bit of a glimpse as to how the people thought of things and how yeah. not so different things are now that they, than, than they were before. As far as the kind of the underlying, you know, big questions that people yeah. have, you know. And, and magazines give you such a good glimpse of, of more yeah. of the everyday kind of yes. people and yeah. what they're going through in their life. And when we look back in history, we tend to just kind of see the headlines and the yes. huge events, you know, and to yes. get to see these simpler facets, yes. you, you get to see the, you know, the some differences, but so many of the similarities that just yeah. keep coming back. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. the thing is, these magazines too. Remember, uh, women in the were the, in the in the home, and they were trying to make a house and a home, and and take care of a family. And so, like cooking and taking care of the family was was a huge thing. So a lot of these magazines have uh, a ton of uh, information on like recipes and how to use this and how to make this last or how to use this 20 different ways, you know, kind of thing. Right. So, uh, which is kind of, again, very timely right now because people are at home uh, making, making meals and trying to figure out how to make things last longer and feed the family for uh, less if you don't have, uh, you know, uh, foods available or variety yeah. available of food uh, right now. So, so it's kind of interesting that that kind of goes back to the same situation that they were in before as far as like trying to stretch uh with uh canned goods um, yeah because there's a lot of uh use of gelatin and canned uh fruits and vegetables here yeah which if you want to see you know, a, a fun uh recipe watch last week's video with the uh the jello salad <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, oh, lemon jello and uh, oh, yes. Worcestershire sauce and oh, celery. That's, so that's one thing that's changed, but I, I can't get over those the, those Jello the, salads. So the, tune the into Jell-O our last week's video if you want to yeah, see. The Jell-O <laughs> a yeah, the Jello salads. Yeah, those are very good. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's. I mean, they 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 managed to uh, to do uh, to stretch out their their budget with things that were um, not as expensive and could make side dishes or other things like look at this column here there were uh 21 new ideas for campbell soup so oh. 21 ways to use campbell soup so I know. You, you can you don't have to just eat it as soup you can yeah. use it all kinds Ooh. of ways <laughs> that's neat so oh, so it's those. kind of again again being uh, resourceful and kind of like uh using um less expensive things to make, you know, more of a meal for your household. Um, it was Are one of those kind of soups, um, or one of the soup recipes for a drink? It's not like yes. a glass, it's yeah. like a glass uh, yeah. of milk. Soup nog. <gasps> Does it tell you what's in that? Yeah. Take one can of cream of celery soup, whip it with one can of milk and two eggs, chill and serve. Chill. Oh no! <laughs> oh my! You're just drinking milk and celery. Celery, celery soup. soup with two eggs. With two. Oh, with two eggs, of course. Oh my! Yeah. That's, no, I don't uh, think. So. How about this one? This one's. This one's very good. Soup for a birthday. See with the little candles. Uh huh. <laughs> so if you don't have cake, you can have. That's chicken pretty. Chicken soup for your birthday. Chicken make soup a, with some little candles. Yeah, make a party soup. A bowl of Campbell's <gasps> beef noodle with candles on Melba toast. <laughs> Good for children, and they'll love it. There you go. <laughs> I think children nowadays would not be too happy with a, a piece of toast floating in soup for their birthday. <laughs> how, about, cake. how about this one? <laughs> soup on the rocks. And what kind of soup is that one? This is a um, cool, clear, and refreshing Campbell's bouillon poured right out of the can into glasses filled with ice cubes. Wow. Oh, <laughs> man. It's just a broth. 
you know, just broth. broth. On, 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 on broth. the rocks. On the rocks. <laughs> on the rocks. How about soup and popcorn? Hey. You just put popcorn fun on for top? Chi- fun for, yeah. Look at that. Soup and popcorn right there. This is very creative, I will Isn't say. It? Isn't it? I mean, soup cool. and popcorn, you know, fun for children <laughs> and grown-ups. Big bowls of Campbell's cream of chicken soup garnished with butter popcorn. Wow. I guess. Hot We're getting soup. lots of, uh, like, yeah. like skull emojis and like <laughs> green face emojis look, look at this one hot buttered hot butter soup hot buttered soup yeah wow it's a glorious tomato soup in big comfortable mugs topped with a generous piece of butter well you know sadly that doesn't sound bad <laughs> that, one, <laughs> that one i might try I've, yeah it probably says I mean, a lot about me but there you go. There, there you go. Oh, so for breakfast, they even have, you know, it's a breakfast, lunch, and dinner kind of thing. Yeah, so, dessert yeah. and drinks. Yeah. yeah, soup and cheese. Oh. You know, just every, just very, very, uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of an interesting mix of what you can do with different types of soup. I guess you got a little bit too creative here. But, sometimes uh, you know, but a little hey. bit too creative but you know yeah That's it, so it's fun. Um, they were trying to sell soup so you yeah know, I, i'm sure a lot of housewives look at this and said oh that kind of sounds good i'm gonna try and see if my family yeah. eats it and then if they did like it she probably use it again you know um, yeah exactly. so it, it was a way to get uh, um, women to try things in their home and then you know, if, if the family kind of liked the flavor, I'm sure they would have kept buying it. So yeah. it was a very effective advertisement, I guess, for Campbell's to uh, get into all kinds of different recipes and ways to use the soups, you know? Yeah, why not? Uh, why not? That's <laughs> so fun. You oh can do it gosh. today, too. You know, go to the yeah. Campbell's soup aisle and <laughs> pick up a lot Let of us soup. know. Yeah, if you make Let that, us know that, if any of these work for you. If you make us that celery eggnog celery, or whatever. Celery eggnog, yes. Whew. Or, or Please how about tag soup us on the a story. Or soup, <laughs> soup on the rocks. On the rocks. <laughs> or, yeah, give your kid the uh, soup cake, you know. Yeah, the soup for cake. For their birthday. And just send us their just sad or angry face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That would be very funny. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, well, thank you, Gabriella. Yeah. Oh, all oh. that was so, so good. And thank oh, you, goodness. everyone watching, for all your questions. Um, I think yes. there are maybe a couple we didn't get to today, but uh, feel free to come back and we'll answer those yes. next time. We'll be back next week with more. Um, also, someone mm-hmm. suggested doing maybe a video focusing on like brushes and things like that. So that's something sure. we'll definitely yeah. uh, consider for the future. But yeah, we'll be back sure. next Thursday. Gabriella, thank you so much. Thank you wonderful and thank you everyone for watching have a lovely rest of your day goodbye goodbye Bye-bye. bye bye